It's gonna be good. That's all I can say. Even in my relaxed state, we still gonna have a good time. Okay? Even in my relaxed state, we're gonna have a great time. We're gonna run some flashes while we're here. We're gonna do a flash on um, our body scrub travel pack. You know, this is all of our scrubs in one. We're gonna do a flash while we're talking on our um, pumpkin and our apple face and scrubs. Another big seller that y'all love, the lip primer and the plum lip oil as well. We're also gonna have on flash our beautiful, amazing black eyeliner. It's gonna be on a flash sale too. We're gonna have our hair mask on a flash sale as well. Boom, 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 right here. Um, and lemon body butter. That's the last thing. Let me see if I have, yeah, I got one open already. Lemon body butter. So we're gonna do flashes. We are going to do some flash sales on all of these products, okay? Um, yes, we are. Yes, we are. Remember to tap the screen. It don't cost a thing. First of all, did y'all, I'm going to be sitting a good bit because it's going to be a lot of talking. I ain't got a pack. I already packed. So I get to be still for a change. Oh, my God. I'm so excited about just getting to be still. I don't have to be, like, moving around in this room. Oh my gosh, I can sit here and talk to y'all. So, Sean, when you come in or if you're in here, pin your pin a comment, pin a comment for me so that way I know you're here. Um, and we're gonna we're gonna get right into it. So, first of all, first of all, did you all enjoy tonight's episode? What did y'all think about tonight's episode? We'll start there. What did you guys think about it? Because we're gonna get into all of it. All of it, all of it, all of it, all of it. Yeah. Hey, Sean, she's here. Yay. <laughs> Somebody said, I was triggered. Um, how do you feel about Mel saying that your fans are going to your head, comparing you to God? <laughs> We're going to talk about it. We're going to talk about all of it. Um, tonight's episode was very telling. I was annoyed <laughs> um, watching you on the show. Now, remember, if you want to come up on the live, if you don't have a thousand followers, you can't show your face, but we can still hear your voice. You can still talk. And there is, um, that's the two little people at the bottom of the screen. You just click that and that will allow you to come up. Okay. That will allow you to come up. So let's go back to, let's start from some beginning stuff. How about that? Um, and there's still more of the girls trip as y'all can see to play out. So, you know, but let's start from the beginning. When when you guys kind of first met me by way of <laughs> Love and Marriage Huntsville, um, and I think something that came a big topic of conversation, I'm reading y'all's comments, um, a big topic of conversation, which they showed tonight, and I appreciate them showing it tonight at the dinner table. One of the first scenes we had, um, one of the first scenes we had, which was um, us at the dinner table, and I mentioned respectful cheating. Okay, so let's start from the beginning of it all. The beginning of the all. The beginning of it all. So, if you notice in that conversation, I said, "Well, apparently it is a respectful way to cheat." Apparently, and I made that comment because after I caught my ex in his shenanigans. And he began to reveal all these other shenanigans that were happening, right? Um, and some of the shenanigans I knew firsthand, almost, because it was told directly to me by the person. Um, so not quite firsthand, because I wasn't there, but she was. So long story short, um, whenever all of that came out and was revealed, for me, it became like a, oh, wow. So people be out here cheating, but they do it in a way where their spouse knows nothing about it. Oh, gotcha. Ain't nobody calling their phone. Ain't nobody pulling up to their house. Ain't nobody doing all of the extras. Oh, right. And that was why I made the comment and why I even asked the question. Um, so that's what that was. Um, in no way, I think we all know this anyway, in no way was there a situation where I was ever teaching anybody to cheat. 
with my ex-husband. That's just, that's dumb to me. Um, it's crazy. Um, but hearing, like, I don't know, hearing it come out of somebody's mouth just kind of makes me feel like seeing that's why I don't fool with you because you're stupid. Like, what you're saying is stupid. What you're doing is stupid. And, and that's why I don't be fooling with you because you stupid. Um, so as I began to run down all of the, well, if that was the case, I would have never needed you to be a shoulder to cry on, right? But you'd love to tell everybody you was a shoulder for me to cry on. Or if that was the case, I wouldn't have gone through all these different things that have been publicly talked about um, by me and my ex. All of the, the crying, the depression, the closet moments. Like, why would there be any of that? Doesn't make sense. Um, so I want to say that <laughs> and I'm going to reveal quite a few of them. Hold on a second. I'm going to reveal quite a few of them. I'm going to reveal quite a few of them, but instances. But when I post or I say flying monkeys, y'all, I say it because I mean it. <laughs> because I mean it. And when I keep hearing stuff repeated, because this is to me how stupid they are. They literally say the same stuff. Um, and then it doesn't take long to realize who the source is. It doesn't take long to realize where it's coming from, right? So when you start looking at this same little small group of people, right, who talk to each other, this same little small group of people, they're getting their information from the same person who doesn't mind lying probably in his sleep. So it's like, wow. And here's the thing. Let's keep it a buck. <laughs> I have heard my ex say that y'all was friends. I mean, well, y'all 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 talked on the phone before y'all was friends. I said what to him? I said what? That sounds so insane. But to hear it repeated, that's why you can't tell me. Where you, you cannot tell me that you're not getting this information. Where you getting this information from? Like, stop it. Somebody said giving talking points. Pretty much. Not pretty much. Yes. <laughs> yes. Talking points. Giving them to these flying monkeys. So, it's it's just that. And, and, and it further, to be real with y'all, it further shows me how important and necessary it was for me to get to myself like I did. You know what I'm saying? Get to myself like I did. Stop hanging with certain people. Like, because the fact of the matter is, y'all, <sighs> there are so many people who have been involved in this entire process. And the fact of the matter is, what you had and what I knew was happening is you had a person trying to turn everybody against me because they felt like if they could turn everybody against me, that would make them look better and possibly give a reason for me to need them and come back home. I'm just gonna keep it a buck. So when you talk about having an issue with me having some solid friends, when you talk about having an issue with me having a great village and support team, that is where the issue comes from. And all the little people who keep rolling it off their tongue, let's go back to my video premiere party, Telltale Signs, right? Um, that was a conversation there. And Destiny was like, I want to be part of your village. Da, da, da. The only reason you're concerned about my village is because my ex is talking to you about my village. And that's weird. That, that was weird too. So people think that I just cut people off and just don't, and just don't do, don't, you know, engage with people or kick it with people. It's because I, I already saw what was going down. Just like my one friend who shared with me, she was like, hey, Mel. Um, she said, I want you to know that I see, and she's a very mature friend. We've been friends for about 14, 15 years. Um, she's super mature. She don't do mess drama and all of that. And she was like, I want you to know, I see how Martel turned your friends against you. She came to my house one day and we were just having lunch, but we ended up talking. And, um, I was like, why do you say that? And she was like, well, because he wanted me to do a project for him a certain project and I told him no because I don't feel right doing it because you're my friend and his response was huh you think she your friend you think she your friend she was like and if I was a weak chick I would have been like well what you mean why are you saying that what she say about me why you say that she said but I said to him 
Well, even if Melody ain't my friend, I'm her friend, so I'm not going to be able to do it. So those type of things, you guys, when I know for a fact the whole agenda that has been like tried to be pushed and I know this stuff, just like when we sat on that reunion stage last year and Martel said to Stormy, <laughs> retreat now, <laughs> retreat. See, that's the stuff he's been running around doing, y'all, for the longest. And I see the little flying monkeys because they all say the same stuff. So, for example, I'm going to read this to y'all. This is literally a text this week. Somebody asked me if I could help them do something. I said, because <clears throat> this is not my blood relative. So I said, did you ask Martel? She said, yeah, he ain't respond. If you don't want to, it's okay. I'll figure something else. I said, I was saying to ask him since I helped out the last few times. She says, he's still salty. I won't stop dealing with you. He don't be trying to help me for real. I said, still salty. Right? What he be saying? Like, he literally has you helping watch the kids when he got them. So that don't make sense. She said, basically, he feels like I make your life easy. So let me tell y'all something. <laughs> let me tell y'all something. Basically, he feels like she makes my life easy. See, this is stuff y'all don't know. That's why all these people connected in a way. The reason I don't fool with them, the reason I don't really talk to them, I'll show up and film my scenes and have fun filming a show. But I know the energy that's coming from the other side and I've been peeped it. And so for that reason alone, it's not necessary for me to be engaged, involved with, or any of that, the same people you are engaged and involved with. Just don't. It doesn't make sense for me to be to, to do that. So, yeah. And like I say, y'all, we taking it slow tonight. I'm slow rolling it out here tonight. I ain't in no rush. I'm not about to talk fast. We about to go slow. We about to get through all of it. So, stuff like that. I'm going to tell y'all another example. My daughter had a tennis match. So, um, we were there. Nell and Chris ended up coming to the tennis match, too. So, we were all there. And after the tennis match... We was kind of just all standing there talking a little bit. And somehow Stormy and came up, right? Somehow Stormy came up. And so I'm so smart with it to where it's like I'm already figuring out what you're doing, but I'm going to let you tell on yourself. <laughs> so while we talking, I said, oh, I said, what, what did I say? What did I say about her? Now, mind you, I'm remembering her mama saying that I supposedly said she was ghetto. And I'm like, how could I say that? I don't even know her. I didn't even know her. I just met her. I don't know her. So I said, I said in, this, in that conversation, me, him, Miss Nell, and Chris. And I said, oh, what did I say about her? That she ghetto? Set up, right? And that fool said, yeah, mm-hmm, yeah, oh, uh, yeah. That's what you said, yep. Yeah. I said, and you a doggone lie. I said, but now I know where that lie done came from. <laughs> I said you a dog on lie. Now I know where the lie came from. So, y'all, it's a lot of little stuff like that. I promise y'all. Y'all see the stuff that's happening on TV, but it be stuff happening behind the scenes too, baby. And that is why you may see me respond or react or not be here for the fake and shenanigans and stuff because it's stuff that be happening outside of the TV screen. It is. So, I was wondering... Where Miss Betty had got that from, why she said that, that somebody told her, to my Huntsville smile, somebody told her I said Stormy was ghetto. And I was like, I don't even, I ain't even know her to even say such a thing. Had never even heard of her. What are you talking about? But see, mm, told on himself. So that was interesting. So again, Another thing that happened on the stage, because again, I pay attention to stuff. Y'all got to remember that. I pay attention to stuff. I remember on the stage at a reunion last year, um, and I don't know if this part aired, it may have, but it was a point when I said, Betty M was saying something I think about my fans or something, and I was like, um, I said something like, um, you over here in groups liking and saying stuff? With people in here talking about my children. 
dogging my kids out. This is what I said on the stage. I said, so you over here liking stuff? She looks at Martell and says, that ain't true, Martell. No, I didn't. That ain't true. So I saw that interaction and I said, yeah, see, I can tell y'all probably talk. I'm just saying. Um, because why was it so important to you for you to look at him and make sure he understood that you didn't talk about his kids? Okay, so I watched that. I watched that. I'm like, mm -hmm, yeah, okay, bet, bet. So that happened. Um, and in regards to, <laughs> in regards to, no, that didn't air. Well, it happened. Yeah, the puppet master. Tell the truth, child. I'm just like, listen. And I cannot make this up. This text, y'all, this was literally this week. This girl said, basically, he feels like I make your life easy. I'm telling y'all, men will want you to have a hard time. They will want you to not be able to live a good life after them. So you will come back to them. Let's just keep it above. So anybody, let me tell y'all, anybody who has been a strong support system around me has been attacked. Anybody who has been a person who has been a strong support system behind me has been attacked all the way to, yes, the millimeters. Yes, even to the millimeters. Anybody who has stood 10 toes down with me, anybody who has stood, you know what I'm saying, 10 toes down and had my back has been attacked. And I see it very plain, plain as day. It's super clear to me. Super, super clear to me. Um, so <laughs> all the way from my brother, all the way from, you know, my brother not wanting the kids around him because he's gay. Um, so, like, so that's their uncle. What you mean? Um, yeah, my makeup artist, Jay. Um, my mother, like any, and my, my fan base, like anybody who has been a support system for me has been attacked. So I see it very plain as day, like just being honest, I do. And so that's why for me, y'all real talk, I literally stay away like kind of just stay to myself when it comes to people who are dually connected because I already know what's going I already know what's happening on that side. I already know. Not by way of me, but I already know the stuff happening on that side. And the funny thing is, is that unfortunately you have some people who fall for it and some people who fall. I mean, manipulation ain't new and you have some people who fall for it and it is what it is. Um, the de double standard stuff, it's so prominent in this group. It is. It is. It is. Um, so let's say this. Let me say this. After, um, I see y'all talking about they are so weak. Yeah, I agree. Um, after the trip was over, I literally, y'all, this is how serious I take hosting. So I'm Southern born and raised. So Southern hospitality is huge for me. And I literally remember wanting, even through the, throughout the trip, before the last day, every day I would ask people, hey, are you having fun? Are you enjoying the activities we're doing? You want to do something else? Like, are you good? I was asking everybody that. Are you good? Do you want to do something else? Are you enjoying the activities? How, are you enjoying the food? Do you like the food? Do you want, you know, different stuff on the menu? That's how I was every day of the trip. The last day of the trip, um, I literally went around to everybody's rooms early that morning to check on everybody because the trip is done. Everybody's leaving today. Let's make sure everybody's good. All right, did y'all enjoy the trip? Did y'all have a good time? Okay. I did that. Every day. I did that. Every day. Hold on a second. I thought I heard. Mm -hmm. Hold on, y'all. Everybody, 
Like, just went and checked on everybody. Make sure everybody was having fun. Making sure everybody had a good time. Enjoy themselves. Um, because I'm able to do that. That Like, that's, I don't know. It's not that deep for me. But even in that, what I will say is what got me or kind of took me back, you know. I didn't understand how after... The trip, saying how after the trip, whenever we came back, um, it was just all this negative talk. That's what I didn't understand. Um, I literally, Destiny's room was one of the rooms I went to. I think by now y'all all understand the sleeping arrangements and how that went, what happened there. Um, and why I put people where they put, where I put people. First of all, let me say, before I got there, I didn't look at the layout of the house. It was not that deep to me. They sent me a picture of the house. I saw the water and the walkout piece. And I said, okay, bet. It looks beautiful. And that was that. Um, but when I got there, you know, I made the decision that I felt made sense. I also, I know some of my friends offered up their room. I offered up my bathroom and closet. Like, I'm like, y'all, the house is all of ours. Like, there's no, even though we got a bed to sleep in, the house belongs to all of us. If you want to come up in here, come on up in here. I I'm having a hard time with all of, you know, the I guess the sunny modes and stuff going on. And I was like, oh, you didn't know that she was going to be here? And she was like, no. I said, I didn't know you didn't know she was going to be here. I was like, I did not know that. Oh, wow. Okay. Gotcha. So you found out when you got here? Yes. I'm like, oh, okay. Um, um, and I said to her, I said, well, look, I said, if anything is taking like a stronghold on you, let people know. Like, if it's too much for you mentally, let people know. You don't have to do anything. And I literally said that. Just, this is a conversation just me and her having. One no cameras. One no other people, you know, to be, you know, one trying to make a scene of it. It was literally just a conversation. Like, hey, listen, if something, if, you, if it's too much for you, let people know. You ain't got to do nothing, you know. So, had that conversation. Now, I will say, when I first sat down... Um, to speak with her because I went to Sunny's room too. But when I first sat down to speak to her, um, to Destiny, I remember hearing a click on the phone that sounded like a recording. And I remember I said, I said, oh, you recording me? Which, you know, hey, but it was just like a, because I, listen, when I tell y'all my senses and everything be so on point, I know what it sounds like to click a record button on the phone. So I heard the little click and I said, oh, you recording me? No, no, uh, no, no, uh, uh, I, it was, it's the charge. I was, I had plugged the phone in and charged. Girl, it's a different noise that a phone make when you plug it into a charger versus when you click that darn voice, um, voice memo button and it go click, it starts, okay? But I let her have it. But because of that, in that moment, I'm like, mm-hmm, okay, bet. Okay, bet. And I remember I went upstairs and I told Lauren about it. I said, girl, I said, you know, I went down to check on everybody to make sure everybody was good. I said, girl, why well, I feel like Destiny uh, was recording, girl? And she was like, Lauren, I was like, what happened? I said, girl, you know, I be having to press the voice memo sometimes on my phone, on your phone. I said, girl, I heard the noise. I said, I heard it. And then I said, her face after that just gave it away. It just did. It just gave away. Like, oh, no, you know, um, it was, I'm charging charge and see and then later on that's what happened before I left out the room later on she was like see 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 it's <laughs> I'm like I bet girl <laughs> bet um so that happened then came home again the conversation went fine though like when I tell y'all my friends at times couldn't even sit beside me because destiny was rushing to sit beside me and I'm not gonna say too much because y'all gonna see it but after all of that, like, because we were talking about it, like, God, Lee, like, y'all can't even sit beside me, God dang. <laughs> um, we talked about it. So after all of that, to come back to Alabama and there to be these interviews with this shade, with this, this, you know, insinuation, like, oh, LB and her, well, she was at his restaurant picking up a plate. Okay, girl, 
Um, I don't know, it was just weird. And then when Nell and Chris came to my daughter's tennis match, when they came, I remember Nell had just gone to, I think it was Marcel's maybe birthday at Black or something, because they had they were over there apparently. And she was like, Destiny just, she I told her she ain't gonna be talking about you. Y'all know Miss Nell. She ain't gonna be talking about you around me. All she wanna talk about is male, 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 male. And Nell told me that too when me and Stormy started hanging out that Destiny would come by her daycare. And all she wanna talk about is male and stormy friendship. Male and stormy, male and stormy, male and stormy, male, male. She was cause Nell was like, male, she really hurt by y'all not being friends no more. She was like, she Destiny come by here crying and talking about you. <laughs> You and, and the friendship, and now, now she friends with you know, talking about me. I'm friends with Stormy, and da 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 da. da. So, when Nell came to the tennis match, and she was like, Yeah, we read black. And, um, like I said, I think it was Marcel's birthday. She was like, Oh, that's what I want to talk about is Melody, Melody, Melody. And if I come back on that show, I'm coming back with a vengeance, blah 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 blah. And I'm just like, So, I'm at the tennis thing, but I'm thinking, like, Girl, what vengeance of what and for why, like. Get your bag if that's what you're going to do, but focus on yourself. Like, I don't, I don't know. But again, I let that slide too. Whatever, right? Whatever, whatever, whatever. Um, even whenever they came today to the restaurant on the show, I was cool. I, I don't know if, they, if you could tell, but when they walked in, I smiled at everybody. I was fine. I was trying to get to the timeline like everybody else. I was, I was good. Um, I don't know if it was thought. That I was going to back down off of what I said <laughs> whenever, you know, Tisha was like, well, Mel, because you were like, F Destiny, mm -hmm, that is what I said. And girl code. Yeah, I, when it comes to girl, yeah, no, I'm good with that. So, that was that. Um, but, <laughs> what I will say is that, it, so it has been all this conversation that has been happening that I've just chosen not to make public or address or say anything about. But it's been happening. So my response and my reaction sometimes is probably why it is that. Because, you know, of all of the extra. Sean, when you ready to put something up for for a flash, let me know and I'll talk about product. Um, so that happened. Then another thing that happened, um, this was probably maybe anywhere from four to six weeks ago, maybe. Because, see, I also have an issue when people don't understand and respect boundaries. You know, I have an issue when it comes to that, too. And I'm noticing that people, a lot of people who don't understand boundaries are all kicking it together. Okay? All right? They all kicking it together. And they don't respect boundaries, don't understand boundaries. So, another thing, like four or six weeks ago, I was out of town because I had a speaking engagement. I think this is when I was in, yeah, I was in Florida. So when I had that speaking engagement in Florida, whenever that was. So my daughter had a tennis match, right? Um, and Destiny came to the tennis match. Now, mind you, I wouldn't have thought nothing of it. Wouldn't have cared too much. Because the fact of the matter is, y'all, here's the thing. This summer, about every other week that my kids was over there with their daddy, they was going over to her spot, swimming and all of this. So I know she's around my kids, right? So whatever, right? <laughs> Which is so, it's so, the, the double standards be so funny. That girl, I went and picked up Plate Baby from Jails Forever and she done said that she saw us together, yeah, at Jails Forever though, picking up a plate. But girl, my kids be over there, you be over there, like, and I know that, I know that. <laughs> so <laughs> anyway. So Destiny was at the tennis match. No big deal, because again, my kids are around anyway. So whatever. So she's at the tennis match. But my problem was this. And the lack of respect of boundaries, okay? Um, my mother was there because I was out of town. So she was here watching the kiddos for me. I had like this speaking engagement, like I told y'all. So the issue for me was this. Um, you spoke to my mother at her granddaughter's tennis match, okay? My mother did not respond to you when you spoke. She don't have to. She doesn't have to, and who the hell are you to think that she does have to? What should have happened at that point was you should have 
You know what? Ooh, boundaries. I'm back. Let me not say nothing back. But instead, what happened is, is you went louder and said, Hey, Miss Van, out here at this tennis match with all these people. My mother still ignored you because, again, she don't have to talk to you if she don't want to. She doesn't have to talk to you. So then what you did is you did it a third time and got louder and said, Hey, Miss Van, again. So my problem with that, again, y'all, this stuff y'all don't know about that happens outside of this show that causes me to treat the people the way I treat them. So first of all, I said, I'm glad I wasn't there. But what I didn't appreciate and like was that, okay, so whenever this continuous speaking happened, what did my ex do? Laughing about it? Well, why is he laughing? He should have been saying, hey, Destiny, chill out. She don't want to speak to you. She ain't got to speak to you. If you're going to watch the girls game, watch the tennis match. That's that. So it's a lot of just disrespect, y'all, that be happening that is very much so um, I keep myself calm. Because the opposite of my calmness just ain't good for nobody. It's just not. So I work very hard to be calm, to ignore a lot of stuff, and to try to stay in um, my own world, own space. Because it be the fakery and the foolishness for me that really be like about to take me there. Because why in the world would you think my mother owes you a hello? I don't talk to you. I ain't gonna lie, I can't tell y'all before this season, the last time I had seen or talked to Destiny. I don't talk to you, I don't talk about you, but I see you still coming around with the same BS. And it's unfortunate, but that's what's happening. It's the same BS, still lying, still throwing stuff out to see what's gonna stick, as Marcel likes to say. Shout out to Marcel for that. I was still trying to figure out what's gonna stick. Um, but look. No respect of boundaries. My mother don't have to speak to you. And let's be clear, this is her granddaughter's tennis match. Okay? 